I'm going to record the pet clinic application with remote recording. I've set it up for AppMap, and I'll be recording calls to the application code and also selected calls to the Spring framework. My first recording will be of opening the owner search form, and I'll also record function calls to the Spring Framework web package for an illustration of how the Spring Framework works. This is the first recorded app map of the Find Owners page. The execution trace starts with the Get Owners Find server request. Let's drill into its details now. We can briefly skim the initial calls to the web framework. They include fetching the supporting infrastructure, setting request context, attributes, and other calls that the Spring Framework performs before calling the application logic. Let's look at this function call in which the framework asks the responsible controller for the model and view to handle this request. I can drill down to the controller's source. You can see how the get owners find request is linked to this controller and function with the get mapping annotation in the source code and that for this request, the view owners find owners will be used to render the page. The model owner will be used to retrieve the data for the view. The subsequent call to the set allowed fields function annotated with init binder initializes the data binder and disallows use of the field ID when owner data is sent from the browser to the backend. And that's it. That's all that was needed from the application implementation to render the find owners page. The framework finds and calls the controller which sets up the data binder and returns the identifier of the HTML view that will render the data. The rest of the calls in the trace show additional activity of the framework. This is actually only a small subset of everything that happens during server request handling, but we can see that the framework subsequently checks if there's a view registered for this request, then a sequence checking locale encoding or that the framework adds the template HTML file to the context of the request. Let's move on to a more complex call that includes fetching and rendering data, searching for and viewing a pet owner. I've recorded the second app map with the list of Spring Framework packages narrowed down to just a small subset that directly calls our application logic to make the app map easier to read. This map recorded two web service calls get owners that finds owners and get owner two for viewing the selected owners details. Let's drill down to the search first to see what's going on. First, the controller's set allowed fields annotated with binder init is called, as in the previous example, prohibiting passing the owner ID in form data. Next, the framework sets the last name in the data model to the value entered in the find owner form. And finally, the controller is called to handle the request. Let's look at the controller details. We can see that it's mapped to the get owners endpoint with the get mapping annotation. It retrieves the last name from the data model. Then it searches for matching owners in the database, calling the owner repositories find by last name function. We can see the query in the annotation of this function. And then, Depending on the found results, it returns either a view with the list of matching owners or a view with details of a single owner. In this case, multiple owners were found, and so the list view was returned and rendered by the framework later. We've seen a query in the find by last name functions annotation, and here are the actual SQL commands captured in the app map. The first select fetches the owners. The following selects fetch details about their pets. The second server request in this app map rendered the selected owner's details page. Here is the show owner control function call, followed by three selects, retrieving the owner and her pet data, pet details, and pet clinic visit details from the database. We can see that this function is mapped to the owner's owner ID endpoint and that the view owner's owner details is used to render the owner details page. Let's look at one more example that inserts new data to the database. I'm going to add another pet to the owner. Here's the app map. 
the recorded trace starts with a server request that renders the new pet form. Available pet types are retrieved from the database by the pet repository. Then the owner's details for the pet's owner are populated in the data model. Then the init creation form function of the pet controller is called by the framework. The function is mapped to the get pets new endpoint and returns the pets created update pet form for rendering the new pet form. It also creates a new pet and adds it to the owner's collection of pets. And then for each pet type found in the database, a pet formatters parse function is called to retrieve the text representation of the pet type in the drop-down list in the form. When I clicked on the add pet button, this post call to the owner's owner ID pet's new endpoint was made, which saved the new pet to the database. The framework populates the model data from relevant tables, pet types and owner. Then the pet controller initializes the data binder and registers a data validator that ensures that the new pet's data is complete before saving. Then the new pet data arriving from the new pet form is set in the data model. After the pet data is set, it's validated for completeness. Then the controller's process creation form function is called. Checking if a pet with the same name already exists for the same owner, preventing duplicate pets from being created. Then the new pet is added to the owner's pet collection. Finally, the new pet is saved to the database with the save function of the pet's repository, triggering an insert in the database. The last recorded request displays the pet owner page with the new pet. And that's it. In only a few minutes, I was able to see and understand how the Spring Framework interacts with my application code. Even if I'm not familiar with the Spring Framework, the combination of app maps and sources allow me to observe and quickly understand how Spring applications work and how the Spring Framework annotations are used in the application runtime. Thanks for watching.